All right. Greetings, everyone. This is chapter one. Book. This is actually book number one, chapter 17. Chapter 17 from book one, side by side. We're going to begin. We are finishing book number one, and we're going to finish up talking about the past tense. In this particular chapter, we are going to be going over television commercials, describing physical states and emotions, um, telling about the past, biographies, and autobiographies. And autobiographies are biographies that are written by somebody about themselves. So that's what we're going to be talking about there. So let's begin by looking at the vocabulary. Please repeat after me. We have some adjectives here today. Sad. Repeat. Sad. The opposite of sad is happy. Happy. Number two, clean. Dirty. Heavy. Thin. Hungry. Fool. Make sure you sound that L sound. Fool. Leave the sound within your mouth for the L. Number five. Sick. Make sure you pronounce that K. Sick. Healthy. Remember the TH, your tongue between your teeth. Healthy. Number six, tiny. Tiny. Enormous. Enormous. Number seven, dull. Shiny. So that doll for the floor is like saying in Spanish, opaque, something that's not brilloso, which is what shiny is. Comfortable. Repeat it again. Comfortable. And the opposite, uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Number nine, tired, and the opposite, energetic. So we're going to do a Presto commercial. This section is called Presto commercials. Review, I, he, she, and it use the past tense of the verb to be, which is was, and we, you, they, because they are plural, the top ones are singular, the bottom ones are plural, he uses the past tense of the verb to be, which is were in the plural form. So let's read together. One, two, three. Before our family bought Presto vitamins, we were always tired. Remember to stop at the period. I was tired. My wife was tired. My children were tired too. Now we're energetic because we bought Presto vitamins. How about you? So in this section, you have to fill this out using the right verbs, the right adjectives actually, that are on the bottom to describe. So I'm going to do one of the exercises and I'll leave this showing here. And then you can actually practice doing some of the other ones. So here we go, number one. Before our family bought Presto ice cream, that's number one, we were always Sad. 
I was sad. My husband or my wife was sad. My children were sad too. Now we are happy because we bought Presto ice cream. How about you? So this is a commercial, like if you were doing it for the TV. So you can practice saying it lively. Okay, let's do one more and then you can practice the other examples. At this time in the video, I encourage you to pause it so you can freeze the screen and you can practice doing all the exercises. Number two, before our family bought bread, we were always hungry. I was hungry, my wife or my husband was hungry, my children were hungry too. Now we're full because we bought bread. How about you? So at home, right where you are, if you could please complete the other exercises, number three, number four, number five, and then you can make up your own for number six. Use your creativity. Here we go. Before I bought Presto shampoo. Let's look at some of these examples. Before I bought Presto shampoo, my hair was always dirty. Now it's clean. See, we can look at the picture. Dirty hair. Now we have clean hair. Let's look at number one. Before we bought Presto toothpaste, our teeth, is that singular or plural? Remember, tooth, T-O-O-T-H, is for one. But if you say teeth, it's for two or more. So here it says, our teeth, and you have to go back to the past, were yellow. So that's the past. Now, in plural, now they, not were, because this is the past, they were yellow. I put it here as an example, so you have it here. They were yellow. Now they're white. Before we bought Presto paint, our house, what is it? Was ugly. Now it's beautiful. Before I bought a Presto armchair, I, in the past, was uncomfortable. Now, am very comfortable. And the last one. Before we bought Presto dog food, our dog, past tense, was tiny. Now, it's enormous. Now, if you love your dog and you want to say he's, we talked about that before. If you want to consider him, if you consider him more than a pet, then you may end up calling your dog he. All right, let's continue on. 
I will leave this here. You can freeze it and complete exercise number five and number six by yourself, please. So, how to say it? Let's see. Recommending products. Can you recommend a good toothpaste? Yes. I recommend Presto toothpaste. It's very good. Thanks for the recommendation. So if I say to you, hey student, can you recommend a good restaurant? Yes, I can, would be your answer. Which restaurant do you think I should visit? Or what restaurant do you think I should visit? I think you should visit blank restaurant because they sell very good food or because they sell a lot of good food. You can answer depending how you want to share. Were you at the ball game last night? Here we go. Now we're doing, we're going back to the past tense, but we're doing it in the negative tense. So, I, he, she, and it again together for the past tense, you would say was not the verb to be, but you could also say wasn't, which is the contraction, which we learned that before. And plural form, we, you, and they, and the past tense in negative, in plural sense, plural tense would be weren't. So we weren't, you weren't, they weren't, they were not. So let's do one or two examples. I'll leave that so you can see a little bit there. Okay. So were you at the ball game last night? No, I wasn't. I was at the movies. Was Albert happy yesterday? No, he wasn't. He was sad. Were they at home this morning? No, they weren't. They were at school. You getting it? I'll do one more and then you can practice the rest. Was it cold yesterday? No, it wasn't. It was hot. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to freeze here for a minute. Please press pause and practice answering all those sentences for your practice for this exercise. So pause it for a minute and we'll continue on. Did you sleep well last night? Remember, I'm gonna point something out here. When you use did, this is automatically, automatically the past tense, you keep the verb in the present tense, okay? Don't forget that. In Spanish, you would say, durmió usted o dormiste, okay? But in English, even though in Spanish you're using a past tense of the verb, here the verb is written in present tense, but when you connect it with did in past tense, that will automatically impact or affect the sentence. So let's repeat. Did you sleep well last night? Yes, I did. I was tired. Did Roger sleep well last night? 
No, he didn't. He wasn't tired. So because he wasn't tired, he didn't sleep that well. So let's do number one. Remember, when you are using the pronouns, I, he, she, we, you, and they, for did and didn't, and in the past, for was and wasn't, for the third person or first person, and for the singular, for the plural, you have to use were or weren't, right? Let's apply them into the sentences. So let's do a few of the exercises and then you can practice the rest on your own. Number one, did Frank have a big breakfast today? Yes, he did. He was hungry. Number two, did Thelma have a big breakfast today? No, she didn't. She wasn't hunger. And let's do one more and then you can do the rest. Here we go. Number three. Did Mr. Chen go to the doctor yesterday? Yes, he did. He was sick. I'm going to go up here to number four and you can pause it and you can continue to complete these exercises. So please pause at this time and complete four through eight. This time we're going to complete the reading. I'm gonna to count to three. And I would like for you to read with me. If you have difficulty, listen to me reading first, and then you can try to repeat with me afterwards. I am not going to read too fast, but I am also not going to read too slow. I'm going to read at a normal pace, a little slower than normal to help you out. Here we go. Maria Gomez. Maria Gomez was born in Peru. She grew up in a small village. She began school when she was six years old. She went to elementary school, but she didn't go to high school. Her family was very poor and she had to go to work when she was 13 years old. She worked on an assembly line in a shoe factory. When Maria was 17 years old, her family moved to the United States. First, they lived in Los Angeles, and then they moved to San Francisco. When Maria arrived in the United States, she wasn't very happy. She missed her friends back in Peru. And she didn't speak one word of English. She began to study English at night and she worked in a factory during the day. Maria studied very hard. She learned English and she got a good job as a secretary. Maria still studies at night, but now she studies advertising at a business school. 
She wants to work for an advertising company someday and write commercials. Maria still misses her friends back home, but she communicates with them very often over the internet. She's very happy now, and she's looking forward to an exciting future. This time, you are going to look at these questions, and you are going to go back to the story, and you are going to answer these questions. First question, where was Maria born? So, what you want to do would be rewind the video, and you're going to say that is you that Maria was born in Peru. The answer is not Peru alone. We want you to answer using a complete sentences. sentence. So you would say, Maria was born in Peru. And then you can stop the video here and you can complete the eight questions and you can also put these sentences in the correct order based on the story. Use the story to help you. You can go back to look at it. Again, you can take a screenshot of this. Here is a story. All of it, you have it there. And let's continue with chapter 17. Now we're going to do a listening exercise. I am going to share with you some sentences from the book. I'm going to share with you some listening scripts. And you are to identify what is the proper answer. Here we go. Listen and choose the correct answer. Number one. Before we bought Captain Crispy cereal, we were always sick. Now we are always healthy. Which is the correct one? They were sick or they are sick now? They were sick. Very good. Number two. We bought new chairs for our living room because our old chairs were very comfortable. We love our new chairs. They're very comfortable. So again, number two, we bought new chairs for our living room because our old chairs were very uncomfortable. We love our new chairs. They're very comfortable. Number two, two choices. Their old chairs were comfortable and their new chairs are comfortable. The answer is B, that is correct. Their new chairs are comfortable. Number three, my daughter Lucy didn't finish her milk this morning. She wasn't very thirsty. Number one, Lucy was very thirsty. Number two, Lucy wasn't thirsty. Was the answer? That is correct. Letter B, Lucy wasn't thirsty. Number four, Fred was on time this morning. Or Fred wasn't on time this morning. Let's read the sentence, number four. Fred was very upset this morning. He was late for the bus and he didn't get to work on time. So what does that mean? Letter B. 
Fred wasn't on time this morning. Let's do number five. Hmm. Where are Peter and Mary? They were at work yesterday, but they aren't here today. Which is the answer? A, Peter and Mary were at work yesterday, or B, Peter and Mary are at work today. So the answer is letter A or B, what do you think? Peter and Mary were at work yesterday? That is correct. And Peter and Mary are at work today. No, no, no. They are not at work today. Number six, the last one. Their kitchen floor wasn't shining. The kitchen floor is dull now. Let's see what number six says. Our kitchen floor was very dull. Our neighbors recommended sparkle floor walks. And now our kitchen floor isn't dull anymore. It's shiny. All right. So what are the choices? The kitchen floor wasn't shiny, but it says here, our kitchen floor was dull. And then now it's shiny, so the kitchen floor is dull now. No, 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 it's not dull now. But at a given point, it wasn't shiny. So the answer is letter A. Very good. Let's continue on with chapter 17. We are almost finishing it up. And then we actually finish the whole book. But don't forget, you have to complete, you have to complete the exercises from the check from the workbook. So don't forget that, okay? So let's continue on your own. Do you remember your childhood? Now look up here. We have now all of the different responses that we have learned when we are talking about the, pre the, the past tense. So now the question talks about your childhood. So let's look at some examples. And you can take some time now and you can actually write down answers to these questions for each and every one of you. So, what did you look like in the past? Your answer would say, have to say, I looked like a model. If you look like a model. Or you could say, I looked like, and you fill it in with whatever you want to put. Were you tall? Yes, I was. Were you thin? Yes, I was. Or, no, I wasn't. Were you handsome? Yes, I was. Or, no, I wasn't. Cute. Now look at this. And we have a different question and we have a different answer. Did you have curly hair? Yes, I did. Or no, I didn't. Did you have straight hair? Yes, I did. Or no, I didn't. Did you have long hair? Yes, I did. Or no, I didn't. Did you have dimples? The little holes here that appear when somebody laughs, smiles, they come on the sides. Yes, I did, or no, I didn't. Did you have freckles? Little dots on your face? Yes, I did, or no, I didn't. And you go down the list. Did you have many friends? What did you do with your friends? What games did you play? 
Did you like school? Who was your favorite teacher and why? What was your favorite subject and why? What did you do in your spare time? Did you have a hobby? Did you play sports? Who was your favorite hero? Now, you can take this and expand it to make it even more interesting. For example, did you have a hobby? Yes, I did. You could say, what was your hobby? You would answer, my hobby was building things with branches. That's what, let's say that's what you like to do when you were a kid. And that will be your answer. So please freeze this screen and go through this whole section, write down the answers and practice. Pronunciation, intonation of yes, no questions, and WH questions. Remember, WH questions are why, when, why, who, where, which. Were you tall? Repeat after me. Were you tall? Now, if you look at the lines, the lines represent the stress. So you make a higher sound, a higher tone. Over here, look. Were you tall? Did you have long hair? What did you look like? Who was your favorite teacher? Were you short? Did you have freckles? Where did you grow up? When did you move? And for homework, you need to write in your journal about your childhood. What did you look like? What did you do with your friends? Did you like school? What did you do in your spare time? And to finish up, we have the chapter summary, reviewing all of the past tense, so let's just review it. I, he, she, and it use was because this is singular. We, you, and they use as were because this is plural. And they're both in the past, but this is was is for singular and were is for plural. And then we look at wasn't. Same idea. I, he, she, and it wasn't, which is the negative form of was, and this is the singular form. The plural form would then be weren't, which is the past tense of the negative form of were, which will be used for we, you, and they. To ask a question, was I late? Was he late? Was she late? Was it late? The answer is simple. Yes, he was. Yes, I was. Yes, she was. Yes, he was. Were we, you, or they late? Yes, we were. And you go from there as you connect and combine all your answers. The negative would be no, I wasn't. He wasn't, she wasn't, it wasn't. And the negative for plural, this was singular, the negative for plural would be no, we, you, and they weren't. All right, let's just pronounce the adjectives as a review. Please repeat after me. Beautiful, clean, comfortable, dirty, dull, energetic, Enormous, exciting, full, good, happy, healthy, 
heavy. Hungry, late, poor, quiet, sad, shining, sick, thin, thirsty, don't forget that TH, tiny, tired. Ugly, uncomfortable, arrive, be born, begin, began, grow up, grew up. Live, move, study, work, the end. Well, everyone, well done. At this time, we are going to now move on to level two, book number two. I'm going to stop sharing this page. Don't forget, complete the book for chapter 17. And we are going to use now book number two. Once I can get it here. Book number two. Chapter, the last chapter of book number two, which is chapter 13. I'm going to share, and then you are officially done with the last chapter of book number two. We just finished the last chapter of book number one. So good job to those of you that have worked on it. Chapter 13. All right, here we are. Chapter 13. Chapter 13 is based on, this is from book number two. And as I remind everyone before we begin with, with um, chapter 13 in book number two, I would like to remind you that chapter two, it's longer than a lot of the other chapters. And it also requires a lot more reading and a lot more practice. So as we're gonna finish here, you're going to have to do some exercises. Make sure you have your notebook with you and make sure you can take some notes Okay, with your notebooks and make sure that you are ready to um, answer the questions and the exercises in order to be able to understand the chapter the best way possible. You want to make sure that you finish strong with this chapter. So here we go without further ado. Chapter 13. All right, we're going to be discussing some, any, and talking a little bit about, we're going to review the pronouns a little bit and a verb tense review. We're going to be talking about offering help, indicating ownership, also household items, and friends. 
So let's begin by looking at this vocabulary. Please make sure that you read this vocabulary out loud. Number one, also make sure you look at the pictures because the pictures align directly with the vocabulary. If you don't know what it means, make sure you write it down in your notebook. Here we go. Number one, electrician. Repeat after me, electrician. Number two, locksmith. Locksmith. Number three, mechanic. Mechanic. Number four. Plumber. Now, I understand that you can see here how plumber has the letter B there, right? But when you pronounce it, you can't hear it. Plumber. Plumber. Number five. Repair person. Repair person. Number six. Downstairs neighbor. Downstairs neighbor. Number seven. Upstairs neighbor. Upstairs neighbor. Number eight, next door neighbor. Next door neighbor. Number nine, dishwasher. Dishwasher. Number 10, faucet. Faucet. Number 10. Garbage disposal. Garbage disposal. Number 12. Lock. Lock. And number 13, video camera, video camera or camcorder, video camera or camcorder. Let's continue on. I'll be glad to help. This is a review of different types of pronouns, personal pronouns, reflect, reflective pronouns, and so forth. So let's say them. You can repeat after me. I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they. Call on number two. Me, you, him, her, it, us, you, them. Call number three. My, your, his, her, it's, our, your, their. Call number four. Mine, yours, his, hers. That line is there because it's the same as it's. It's the same exact one. Ours, yours, theirs. And the last one, last column. Myself, yourself, himself, herself, 
itself, ourselves, yourselves, and themselves. So let's look at the questions so we can know how to do the exercises. Here we go. So we can look at both, almost all here. Here we go. What's Johnny doing? He's getting dressed. Does he need any help? I'll be glad to help him. No, that's okay. He can get dressed by himself. All right, so let's change it up a bit. Number one, what's your daughter doing? She's feeding the canary. Does she need any help? I'll be glad to help her. No, that's okay. She can feed the canary by herself. All right. One more. Number two. What's Johnny doing? Oh, let me make this smaller so you can see this. Can you see more? Here we go. Right there. What's your husband doing? He's cleaning the garage. Does he need any help? I'll be glad to help him. No, that's okay. He can clean the garage by himself. All right, so you got some exercises here. I'll freeze it here. So you start with what's the person doing? Pause it. And you can work on answering this in your on your notebook, okay? So do this in your notebook. And let's continue. I just found this watch. I just found this watch. Is it yours? No, it isn't mine, but it might be Fred's. He lost, it. he lost his a few days ago. Really? I'll call him right away. When you talk to him, tell him I said hello. All right, let's look at number one. Fill in the blanks, okay? The parts that you need to change. Number one, I just found this. What is it? Umbrella, very good. Is it yours? No, it isn't mine. But it might be Kate's. She lost hers a few days ago. Really? I'll call her right away. When you talk to her, tell her I said hello. One more example. Let's do number two together. Here we go. I just found this wallet. Is it yours? No, it isn't mine, but it might be Fred's. Um, not Fred, sorry. <laughs> it might be Alan's. So you have to remember to put the apostrophe on the S for possession, right? It might be Alan's because Alan is down here. He lost his a few days ago. Really? I'll call him right away. When you talk to him, tell him I said hello. Let me see if I can make this a little smaller. You have it all there. Pause it and please complete the exercises 
for this section. Following the same pattern of the ones that we just completed. All right, let's continue on. Make this a little bigger so it's easier for us to see. I couldn't fall asleep last night. Let's see. You look tired today. Yes, I know. I couldn't fall asleep last night. Why not? My neighbors were arguing. How late did they argue? Believe it or not, they argued until 3 a.m. That's terrible. Did you call and complain? No, I didn't. I don't like to complain. Well, I hope you sleep better tonight. I'm sure I will. My neighbors don't argue very often. All right, let's look at the example. Let's make it a little smaller so we can see all of it. Here we go. Number one, you look tired today. Yes, I know. I couldn't fall asleep last night. Why not? My downstairs neighbor was singing. How late did he sing? Or yes, you can say, how late did he sing? Believe it or not, he sang, past tense, until 2 a.m. That's terrible. Did you call and complain? No, I didn't. I don't like to complain. Well, I hope you sleep better tonight. I'm sure I will. My downstairs neighbors doesn't sing very often. Excellent. So I'm gonna make this a little smaller so you can try it. So if you could please try to complete number two, and try to complete number three, and try to complete number four. You can do your best. You got this. All right, let's continue on. Make this a little bigger again, so you can see it better. These are more examples that you can just maybe take a picture of and follow the same instructions as the other. And here we go. This section is called On Your Own for you to use your own creativity. Do you know your neighbors? Are they friendly? Are they helpful? Do you sometimes have problems with your neighbors? So you want to talk in this section where you could write it down. So you would say something like, yes, I know my neighbors. They are very friendly people. Or some of them are not that friendly. Some of them don't like to talk. And some of my neighbors are very helpful. Others are not. I have problems with some neighbors or I don't have problems with neighbors. 
So talk with other students about it. We don't have students here presently, but you can write about it. So you could do it as a journal entry. Here we go. Do you know anybody who can help me? Something, somebody, someone. Anything, anybody, anyone. So let's look at some examples. Look over here. There's something wrong with my washing machine. Algo malo. I'm sorry, I can't help you. I don't know anything about washing machines. Yo no sé nada about washing machines. Do you know anybody conoces a alguien who can help me? Not really. You should look in the phone book. I'm sure you'll find somebody who can fix it. Good. So let's look at an example. I'll make this smaller. Let's do number one. There is something wrong with my refrigerator. I'm sorry, I can't help you. I don't know anything about refrigerators. Do you know anybody who can help me? Not really. You should look in the phone book. I'm sure you'll find somebody who can fix it. One more. Number two, here we go. There's something wrong with my dishwasher. I'm sorry, I can't help you. I don't know anything about what about dishwashers. Do you know anybody who can help me? Not really. You should look in the phone book. I'm sure you'll find somebody who can fix it. Excellent. So at this time, you are going to continue on and you are going to do exercises three through seven and you're going to make up one exercise for yourself for number eight. So work hard, you can do it. So freeze it or take a picture of it and then complete the exercises. Let's continue on. Can you send a plumber? So let's listen to this whole conversation to try to get a plumber to come. I'm gonna read it and then I want you to try to read it yourself and try to read it consistently, okay? Try not to read it too slowly. Try to read it as normal as you can. So let's see, let's begin. You pick up the phone and you dial, ring, ring, ring. And the person says, Armstrong Plumbing Company, can I help you? Yes, there's something wrong with my kitchen sink. Can you send a plumber to fix it as soon as possible. Where do you live? 156 Grove Street in Centerville. I can send a plumber tomorrow morning. Is that okay? Not really. I'm afraid I won't be home tomorrow morning. I'll be taking my son to the dentist. How about tomorrow afternoon? Tomorrow afternoon, what time? Between one and four. That's fine. Somebody will be here then. What's the name? Helen Bradley. And what's the address again? 156 Grove Street in Centerville. And the phone number? Two, three, seven, nine, one, eight, zero. Okay. 
We'll have someone there tomorrow afternoon. Thank you. So make sure you read this by yourself. And we'll continue on. Let's see what this looks like. There is a set of exercises in the page that follows for you to fill out this script using the exercise. So I'll make it a little bigger and then smaller. So it starts like this. Ajax Home Electronics Service, can I help you? Yes, there's something wrong with my TV. Can you send a repair person to fix it as soon as possible? Where do you live? I live in 138 Berry Street in Dover, New Jersey. I can send a repair person tomorrow morning, is that okay? Not really. I'm afraid I won't be home tomorrow morning. I'll be swimming. How about tomorrow afternoon? Tomorrow afternoon? What time? Between 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. That's fine. Somebody will be here then. What's the name? John Baker. What's the address again? 136 Berry Street. And the phone number? 973-882-1532. Okay. We'll have somebody there tomorrow afternoon. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna make this smaller so you can take a picture of the whole thing. Maybe too small if I do this. It's page 132 in your book, so just try. Here, just take a picture of this. There you go. And then take a picture of this, and then you can do all four exercises. Okay? Good to go. All right, now we're going to complete this reading. We have someone here with us today. Not sure who it is. Well, let's continue. We have, um, we're going to complete this reading. It's titled Trouble with Carbs. Trouble with Carbs. So I'm going to ask you to read it with me. I'm not going to read too fast. So I ask for you to please read with me. Read, me. read with me. Here we go, one, two, three. Trouble with carbs. It might seem hard to believe, but my friends and I are all having trouble with our carbs. There's something wrong with all of them. Charlie is having trouble with his. The brakes don't work. He tried to fix them by himself, but he wasn't able to since he doesn't know anything about cars. Finally, he took the car to his mechanic. The mechanic charged him a lot of money and the brake still don't work. Charlie is really annoyed. He's having a lot of trouble with his car. 
and he can't find anybody who can help him. Betty is having trouble with hers. It doesn't start in the morning. She tried to fix it by herself, but she wasn't able to. Since she doesn't know anything about cars. Finally, she took her car to the mechanic. The mechanic charged her a lot of money and the car still doesn't start in the morning. Betty's really annoyed. She's having a lot of trouble with her car and she can't find anybody who can help her. We got two more. Mark and Nancy are having trouble with theirs. The steering wheel doesn't turn. They tried to fix it by themselves, but they weren't able to since they don't know anything about cars. Finally, they took the car to, the mecha to their mechanic. The mechanic charged them a lot of money and the steering wheel still doesn't turn. Mark and Nancy are really annoyed they're having a lot of trouble with their car and they can't find anybody who can help them. And the last one, I'm having trouble with mine too. Hello, I see you, hello. Is this the one and only Oriana? It is. Yes, she is. Hi, Oriana. Good to see you. <laughs> hey, Ariana, you want to read the last one by yourself? Wait. I'm having trouble with mine too. Just, um, I can now. Because let me turn that off. All right, Ariana. I'm gonna put it up. I'm gonna share it again. Could you please read the one on the right? The one that says the one that has the guy with the window and the rain. Uh, the one that says I'm having? Yep. Wait. You muted, Oriana. I'm having trouble with mine, too. The windows don't go up and down. I try to fix them by myself. I wasn't able to. Since I don't know anything about cars. Finally, I took the car to my mechanic. The mechanic charged me a lot of money and the window still don't go, still don't go up and down. I'm really annoyed, having a lot of trouble with my car and I can't, can't find anybody who can help me. Excellent. So we have here that all four stories, every single person is having trouble with their cars. That's why it's called trouble with cars. So you make sure that you look here at this one and then we have a question. Let's look at question number one. Charlie tried to fix blank car by blank. So let's see, Charlie tried to fix. His car by. By what? Right here. By himself, 
Okay. So just take a picture of this section and you can answer the questions based on the prior reading. At this time, we're gonna move over to do the answers for this question. Congratulations, Ariana. Already in middle school, you're a big girl growing up. We're gonna do the listening section. For this chapter, which is the last one, here we go. So we are right now on page 134. So here we go. Ariana, you can, um, if you want to, you can write the answers on the screen once I read it, if you want to give it a shot, see if you get them right, okay? So we're going to do what's the word. Listen carefully. Number one, you have two choices. It's either him or her. So listen carefully. Number one, do you know him well? What's the answer? For number Wait, one. what's the question? I'm going to read a question and you have to circle the one that I say. So you look at number one over here and you have him or her. You're going to circle the one you hear me say. I'll read it again. Question number one. Do you know him well? Uh, Did I say A or B? A. Correct. So you can, you can circle there, Ariana. Number one is A. All right, number two. I'll be glad to help them. Um, A or B? I'll be glad to help them. Uh, oh, B. B, very good. All right, number three. Did you see him today? Did you see him today? B. All right. Number four. So here, let's put that one and then him. Very good. Number four. This is a sentence. Yours will be ready at five o'clock. Yours will be ready at five o'clock. Uh, Señora Altagracia, ¿es usted? Mr. Quiñones, no. Mr. Quiñones, no. <laughs> oh. oh, ¿cómo está? Oh, la, la, la vi medio de lejos. ¿Cómo está? Es mi mamá. Ya me di cuenta. Es que está sin nombre. It's a Zoom user. Oh, that's what it is. Okay, continuamos, continuamos. Gusto verla. Okay, um, number four. Here we go. Yours will be ready at five o'clock. The answer is? A. A, very good. Number five. Careful, you might hurt yourselves? Uh, oh. A or B? B. Very good. We're, been, we're having trouble with her car. Very good. Her car. Excellent. And let's do section two on the right side. It says, what are they talking about? Listen and choose what the people are talking about. Here we go, number one, listen carefully. I'm going to have to call the plumber. Very good, because the plumber 
fixes the sink. And then number two. Number two, listen carefully. I'll be glad to help them. Oh. oh no, sorry, wrong one. I read the wrong set. Number two, here we go. It's broken. We won't be able to wash dishes. Which one that is it? pretty easy. Okay, so what is it? Very good. It's broken, so you can't wash dishes. So it's the dishwasher. Altagracia, we're doing um, we're doing listening exercises, okay? So number three. So listen to number three. Right here, you have two choices, Altagracia, TV or camcorder. Listen. I'm upset. I can't watch my favorite program. Which one is it? TV or camcorder? TV, very good. All right, we got two left. Number four, we have headphones or cell phone. Here we go, number four. It doesn't work. I can't call anybody. Cell phone, very good. Number five, my mechanic fixed the brakes. Windows or car? What did it say? I said my mechanic fixed the brakes. Car is correct. Very good. Excellent. Thank you, Ariana, for your help. Ariana, right, you can clear them all just by pressing a clear all. You could do that too. You just go here, clear, and clear all. That's it. Thank you. So let's continue. How about you? Are you handy? Do you like to fix things? Tell about something you fixed. What was the problem? How did you fix it? And also tell about something you couldn't fix. What was the problem? And what did you do? So this is something that you have to do and you have to write down so you can answer. So I'm gonna give you an example and then you're gonna write your own example. Here's my example. Are you handy? Yes, I am somewhat handy. Do you like to fix things? Yes, I like to fix things. So one time, I can't see car. anything. One time I had a car and my exhaust, which is the really the really long tube that go that's under the car with the muffler, under the car, it broke and it fell, it fell. And I never I had never changed that before. But my friend, he was a mechanic. So I went to my friend's house and I told my friend, can you help me to change this muffler and the exhaust? I bought it, I put it in the car, got to his house and I took it out. This is what we did. I did all the work. He told me what to do and I did it for me to be able to learn how to do it. So, when you are helping somebody, you have to use certain vocabulary, like this one. When you're gonna give advice, dar consejos, okay? So somebody says to, says to you, hey, I'm having trouble with my car. Your answer, what my friend told me was, okay, well, you should buy a new motor. You should buy an exhaust. You should buy the pipe. And you ought to. Tiene que. I think you should. Pienso que debería. I think you ought to. Pienso que tienes que. Okay? 
And then you fill in the blank. Take it to a mechanic. There are times that somebody will tell you, I think you should drink a Tylenol. But other times they'll tell you, I think you should go to the doctor, right? Same thing. So you should drink a Tylenol or you ought to see your doctor, okay? And we are going to continue on. We have a reading section. And we're going to read together. Let me make it a little bigger. All right. That's what friends are for. Let's read together. One, two, three. Frank has some very nice friends. He sees his friends often. When he needs help, they're always happy to help him. For example, Last week, Frank moved to a new apartment. He couldn't move everything by himself. And he really didn't, he didn't really have enough money to hire a moving company. His friends came over and helped him move everything. He was very grateful. His friends said, we're happy to help you, Frank. That's what friends are for. Here we go. Next one. Emma has some very special friends. She sees her friends often. When she needs help, they're always happy to help her. For example, last month, the faucet broke in Emma's kitchen and flooded her apartment. There was water in every room. She couldn't fix everything herself and her superintendent didn't help her at all. Her friends came over and helped her fix the faucet and clean up every room in the apartment. She was very grateful. Her friends said, we're happy to help you, Emma. That's what friends are Four. So here we have, it's nice to have friends you can rely on when you need help. Tell about a time when your friends helped you. Tell about a time when you help a friend. So here we go. Let's ask, what do we have here? So, Ariana, you think your mom can do it? All right, so Ariana, you can start. Tell a story. Tell a story of a time when you help somebody. Ariana, are you there? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Tell a story of a time when you help somebody. All in English. One minute. Um, I don't know. All right, your mom's going to do it. Angela. Yeah. Angela, tell a story of a time when you help someone. 
in English. One day, one day, Es que se escucha un eco, entonces no alcanzo a escuchar bien lo que él me dice. Tell us a story of a time when you helped someone. Emma. Sin miedo, cuéntanos una historia de un día que usted ayudó a alguien. <laughs> ¿En serio no entendió eso? Ay, no. no. Ok, Oriana, go ahead. I don't know. You don't know. Altagracia, can you tell us? One time you help someone in English. Go ahead, you're going to try. Ok, vamos a ver. Aquí Altagracia va a tratar. Vamos a ver. Okay, so she said, one day I helped my friend to get to the supermarket. Excellent. That's good. Now, can you tell me of a time when someone else helped you? So you told me how you helped your friend. Now tell me of a time when someone helped you. You can start the same way. One day, my friend and or a family member, how did someone help you? Excellent. Last week, my sister helped me to wash my hair. And that was good. That was a good sentence because you used past tense. And because you used uh, the past tense, you used the present tense. To wash, okay? To wash my hair. So you used the proper past and present. So good job. Excellent. We're almost finished. Let's see. This is the last chapter, the last section, and we are done with chapter six, the chapter 13, book number two. So here we go, pronunciation, repeat after me. Here we go. Listen, tell him I said hello. Tell him I said hello. Repeat after me. Tell him I said hello. So the point of this exercise is that even though this is him, the sound almost disappears. It's connected. Okay? Tell him I said hello. So you don't really hear it that much. Tell him I said hello. I'll be glad to help him. I'll be glad to help them. Good, Ariana. He can't get dressed by himself. What did he say? He, he can't get, get dressed, by, dressed himself. by himself. Good. The mechanic charges him a lot of money. The mechanic uh, charges him a lot of money. Excellent. Give me money. Thanks. Tell her I said hello. Oh, I I say hello. I say hello. I'll be glad to help her. I'll be glad, I'll be to, glad help to help her. her. She can make lunch by herself. She can make lunch by herself. The mechanic charge her a lot of money. The mechanic charge her a lot of money. Excellent. Sweet okay. money. Both the chapter summary. All right. Again, repeat after me. Pay attention. We're going to say it fast. Okay, this is just a review. Subject pronouns. Repeat. Subject pronouns. Subject I. pronouns. You, I, he, he, you, he, we, he, it, we, we, 
You. You. They. 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 Object pronouns. Object pronouns. Object pronouns. Me. 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 You. 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 Him. Him. Her. Her. It. Him. It. Us. Us. You. You. Her. Them. 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 Possessive adjectives. My. You. My. My. His. His. Her. Her. Your. It's. It's. Our. Our. Your. 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 Their. Their. Possessive pronouns. Possessive pronouns. Mine. Mine. Yours. Mine. Yours. His. Yours. His. His. Hers. 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 It's. What? It's. It's the same as the one on the other side, Ariana. Uh, it's. This one. It's the same one. Ours. Ours. Yours. Yours. Theirs. Theirs. And reflexive pronouns. Reflexive pronouns. Myself. 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 Yourself. Yourself. Himself. 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 Herself. 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 Itself. 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 Ourselves. 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 Yourselves. Yourselves. Themselves. 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 All right. And the final section. Some or any. Repeat after me. I'm going to say the whole sentence. Listen carefully. There's something wrong with my washing machine. There is something wrong with my washing machine. Excellent. Repeat the next one. I'm sure you'll find somebody who can fix it. I'm sure you find somebody that can fix it. I'm sure you'll find someone who can fix it. I'm sure you find you can find someone who can fix it. I don't know anything about washing machines. I don't know anything about washing machine. machine. Good. Do you know anybody who can help me? Do you know anybody, you know who, can help anybody who can help me? Do you know anyone who can help me? Do you know anyone who can help me? All right. Then we have the possessive of singular and plural nouns. Here we go. Neighbor. 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 And then neighbor's dog. Neighbor's dog. And then neighbor's. Neighbor's. Neighbor. Neighbor's son. Neighbor's, neighbor's son. Son. All right. So I want you to pay attention to this. This is really important. Look over here. So, neighbor. Is just one person, right? That's yeah. my neighbor. But that's my neighbor, for example. So my neighbor has one dog. So I see the dog and I say, Look, this is my neighbor's dog. How many dogs? One. How many neighbors? One. So you put the apostrophe and you put the S. And this means that my neighbor owns this dog. Now, this is very important. Look over here. 
I have neighbors. Okay, I have many neighbors. Now let's say that my neighbors, they have many of something, okay? Mm -hmm. What happens is, this is my neighbor's son, okay? So this is, let's say, John and Lucy's son from both of them. They are both the age. So it's more than one person. You see? So you now put the apostrophe after the S, not before. Do you understand? Okay, veo un poquito de miradas un poco confusas, le explico en español. Tenemos aquí que ponemos la comilla antes de la S cuando lo que estamos hablando es posesión de una persona. Solamente. ¿Ok? Pero si esa, esa posesión o esa cosa conectada con esta persona es más de una persona, en ese caso sería, este es el hijo de los vecinos. Son dos. Y esta es la confusión que a veces nos causa, porque como hay una S, pues asumimos que S es plural. Pero en, en la posesión no es que la S sea plural. En la posesión, la comilla determina si es plural. La comilla S representa solamente uno. La comilla, la, la S comilla representa más de uno. ¿Ok? ¿Estamos bien? ¿Entendieron? ¿Ángela entendió? Yes. Ángela, voy a dar una clase de verano en inglés. Para padres dos veces a la semana en... Bueno, le cuento ahorita. Bueno. Um, here we go. All right, let's finish the last one. Last vocabulary. Where's the arrow? Here it is. All right, here we go. Repeat after me. Dentist. 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 Electrician. 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 Locksmith. 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 Mechanic. Mechanic. Plumber. Plumber. So you see that letter B? You don't pronounce it. Plumber. Plumber. Ah, plumber? Plumber, yes. You don't say the B. Plumber. Repair person. Repair person. Oh, this word over here. Occupations. 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 Excellent. All right. Objects. 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 Address book. Address book. Brakes. Brakes. Dishwasher. Dishwasher. Faucet. Faucet. Faucet, good. Garbage Faucet. disposal. What? Garbage disposal. Garbage disposal. Good. Headphones. 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 Lock. 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 Book. Not book. book. Phone book. Phone book. book. Steering wheel. Steering wheel. Steering wheel. Steering wheel. Steering wheel. 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 Video camera. Video camera. Video camera. Camcorder. Camcorder. Good. All right, so this finishes chapter 13 of book number two.
this time I'm going to stop videotaping and I'm going to ask you to make sure you complete the questions for chapter 13 on your packet and put it together with your binder so I'll be able to check it later on. Good job, everyone. Let me stop recording.